So uh, when I was um, a kid, you know, I started um, playing the violin. Music was very uh, intriguing to me, and I started at 12 years old. I was, you know, one who came up uh, playing in church, uh, being at church, so I was exposed to, you know, the choir, the black church experience with the, with the organ and the singing and uh, the musicals. Just being in that environment, it, uh, you know, made me really feel connected with, with worship, with uh, praise. And uh, I, I don't know, it was something that was uh, really captivating about that. I remember seeing Sesame Street uh, and they had an episode where they showed the making of the saxophone. I ended up, you know, really being into that and so um, I was like, man, I want to do that. I like that. And so it was one of those things where on the first day when we went to our uh, band camp in the summer, my dad had got me a saxophone, the tenor saxophone. And the first day they only showed us one note. But I went to the teacher and uh, I said, uh, hey, you only showed us one note. What's the rest of the notes? And uh, he said, well, you're going to get that, you know, the rest of the week. We're going to, you know, learn more. And I was like, that wasn't, that wasn't good enough for me. So I went home and I, I learned the rest of the notes on the horn. I like to play basketball also. And so my dad was really good about allowing me the, the space to uh, kind of explore. Um, and he got a video camera. We would play basketball with my friends. And I record myself kind of commentating over what we were doing and slow it down, had a slow motion when somebody going to dunk. I just saw um, opportunity to share and inspire through creating uh, video content even at that time. My first step was uh, Weatherford College and there at Weatherford, I was able to connect with some um, local musicians. Cats were coming to um, Weatherford to go to school. So I stayed there a year and uh, got a chance to really grow. But I was really looking forward to going to um, Southern University where Mr. Alvin Baptiste, late uh, Alvin Baptiste was a phenomenal teacher, um, clarinetist. He kind of took me under his wings for five years there. So first year that I was there at school, he told me um, that it's time for you to, to do your CD. And so at, the, at 19, that was when I uh, recorded my first CD. Also, uh, I learned about an older guy who would just come to the college and share different things on entrepreneurship. He turned me on to Rich Dad, Poor Dad with uh, Robert Kiyosaki. And I learned about mutual funds and investing. So I actually started um, in my early 20s. I went home that summer and uh, ended up uh, recording my CD, got the musicians together, and I was writing tunes. I got a chance to travel around the world and and you know, perform and was recognized as a um, you know a, an accomplished jazz musician, jazz saxophonist. At the same time, you know, I had the entrepreneurial type of itch going on, where I was looking for other ways to to earn as well. I um, ran across a scripture, Deuteronomy eight eighteen, and uh, it it it's talked about how. You know, remember the Lord thy God for his he to give you the power to obtain wealth, to establish his covenant, even as it is this day, as he, sw as he swore unto the fathers. Once you're a part of this covenant, this, this contractual agreement between you and God through faith, then we have access to those blessings that come with it. But the thing about the scripture that's key is you know, he's given us the power to obtain wealth. Power is the ability to do to do work. And so I started getting these ideas. And so while I was practicing at my mom's, uh, I just got this idea. It's like, you need to get paid for practicing. And I was like, wow, how would, how would that work? That's when I started um, Jazz Web Shed. So the idea was to be able to practice and do what I do and share it with people. Before the pandemic, I was creating um, my own bundles of, of licks. Licks are like lines, musical lines. And so I would package up some uh, licks and sell them on my website. I would put together play-alongs and 
uh, transcriptions and sheet music. That uh, really launched me into the idea of just being able to have the freedom to explore different um, business opportunities. In that time period, I was really inspired, pushed to do real estate. I ended up uh, starting my real estate uh, business like an LLC and I ended up getting involved like right the tail end of my full-time position. So I was able to um, get qualified to get this, this loan. And so I started investing in real estate right before the pandemic. So it was like good and bad because as soon as I got a property, the pandemic happened and then they wasn't paying their rent. <laughs> so, but at the same time, if I hadn't have done it uh, at the time I did, I wouldn't have been able to get that loan and then to start, you know, actively as a real estate investor. And so I was making money regardless of not having any gigs. When you start um, pursuing these ideas and everything and, you know, you talk about your convictions, you know, the thing about being a man, a father, uh, a husband and a father, you know, we have to be the provider. We have to be the protector. We got to be the priest of our home. It's not just about the things that we're passionate about in terms of uh, our creative uh, aspirations. Our gift um, really as, as men is, is administration. I ended up uh, really seeing that my giftedness was the way I thought. And even my pastor told me, he's like, well, man, you gotta make money with your mind and not your music. I was so focused on running after these ideas where my wife just needed me just to be there, you know, out of the country and traveling a lot. And she would be at the house by herself. I know that I needed to to be around, you know what I'm saying? Because I saw a lot of musicians who would be traveling all over the world. A lot of them wasn't married. A lot of them been married and divorced. And uh, a lot of them were just always gone. And I was like, you know, I didn't want to be like that. I wanted to have control over my schedule. I wanted to have control over my time. If me and my wife wanted to go hang out, we could. If I now I got two kids, so if I want to be there, hang out with my, my daughter or my son, I'm able to do that. We able to go to the park or, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to have the flexibility. Your active income that you make through, through working, and then you have to take that to create passive income. And passive income can come through, um, you know, you know, CD projects or teaching projects. And, you know, you can have digital product, products as, as well. Uh, I took, you know, my active income to help invest into other things as well. So I have my active income, passive income and investment income. And so um, I really kind of figured out a system and um, that system is what allowed me to create freedom.